it's Stacy, and I'm back again with another Harry Potter craft tutorial. Um, it's a little bit different today because I'm doing a combination of crochet and embroidery, and I guess I'll just show you what it is. It is this Dribbles Best Blowing Gum, uh, just little pouch, and it's inspired by this. I don't know if any Harry Potter fans really remember this, but these were. Uh, what they would sell at like bookstores if you went to Borders or uh, Barnes and Noble or wherever, they would have these little uh, packages with like the Pretty Boss Every flavor beans and the chocolate frogs and everything. And you could buy Drupal's Best Blowing Gum, and it was just blue gumballs. But I had this one, and I wanted to recreate it a little bit bigger, and I came up with this. So as you can see, um, the patch is embroidered. And then I crocheted the little bag, and here's a look at the back so you can sort of see the texture a little bit better. But um, it's called, I think, like the linen stitch or the moss stitch. There's a couple different names for it. So anyway, I crocheted this, and then I made the little tie, and this is how the bag came out. Um, yeah, I guess I will just get into it. This is going to be kind of a little tutorial. I didn't get totally in-depth on every single thing or show you the whole entire process because it took hours <laughs> to make this thing. Um, but I'm going to kind of give you a little idea of how I did everything. And I'll start off by showing you what I needed for this project. So I guess I will start with the things that you need to make the patch. So the patch has two different colored felts. It's blue and gold. So these are the felts that I got. Um, I think I got them at Michael's. This one is the blue one. It came in a really big giant sheet and it's actually a little bit thicker. So this was really great uh, for the main part of the patch to have that thicker felt. And then I had this gold already all <laughs> ripped up and cut up anyways but this is the gold that I used um, also from Michaels and then for the patch also I used three different kinds of embroidery floss I have the label for this one this is just a standard like white embroidery floss I don't know the number it's the DMC brand I know that much because that's what all of them were I got them all at Michaels um, and I actually used two different like versions of white on this uh, on the patch which you don't have to I don't really know why I did that this is the like pure white color right here uh, for all the lettering and that's this one and then I had this off-white color as well which I do have the number for that one uh, it was also DMC 746 so that's for this edging that I did and then I used black which is number 310 and that's the same brand as well and the black was used for this. And I actually had to get a second one. Um, one little bunch of the floss wasn't enough, so I had to go back and get a second. So make sure you do two blacks. Let's see, so the thread, oh, the needles. So the needles that I used for embroidery are these little tiny needles, um, also by DMC. It's a size 24. Honestly, not an expert on sizing. This is just what I used. I have one out that I used to show it to you. It's very tiny. I kind of wish I had like a bigger one, not like thicker, but longer to grab onto. Uh, so I don't really know that that was an appropriate needle for this project. Um, and then as far as sewing the patch on, I use this one. This is like a little bit bigger, but I don't know what size this is. You can use uh, a different one if you want to sew it on. It doesn't really matter. I think that's it for the patch. Oh, well, I forgot something pretty important, <laughs> embroidery hoops. I used this, I think it's like three inches or so to do the blue inside part. Um, I made that first. And then I also used this bigger one. I just stuck the blue one, you'll see in the middle, put the yellow in this hoop and then sewed the blue onto the yellow. Now that's it for the patch. Next thing is the actual bag itself. So the main material used for that is this cotton yarn. It's peaches and cream. I got it at Walmart. This is what it looks like up close. And the color is ecru. I wanted it to be the cotton because I wanted that linen stitch to really show through and I just didn't want to use like a fuzzy yarn on this project, which the cotton yarn is not as fuzzy. And then the last yarn that I had was this ginormous roll of Karen One Pound. It's black. Uh, I use this in my Harry Potter afghan video. It's the same roll. This is going to last for a lifetime. It's ginormous. But and to sew in the ends, um, after I was 
done crocheting, I used this yarn needle. So there's three needles that I had total, but you don't have to have three, I don't think. Uh, it doesn't matter. But anyway, this one is pretty big and I just used it to sew in my ends. Again, I don't know the size. I think that that's it besides, oh, scissors, obviously. Need scissors to cut the string in the yarn. Um, yeah, I think that's all that I used. Oh, one more thing that I forgot that's highly important and I probably should have told you about. Crochet hook. Can't crochet the little bag without the crochet hook. Um, so this is a Susan Bates H uh, five millimeter hook. So anything that you're comfortable working with a four medium weight yarn, this is what I used. But you can use whatever you feel like. I think that's everything. So now I'm going to get into showing you how I made the actual bag itself. I'm going to show you how I started with this blue patch first. Okay, so we're going to start off by putting our felt into our 3 inch embroidery hoop. We're going to make sure it's nice and tight. And we need our small needle. You're also going to need about an arm's length of the white thread, which you're going to split. You only want to use four strands for the word droobles. And for best and blowing, you're going to use those little two strands that are left over later, so save those. Thread your needle and put a triple knot at the end so that your thread doesn't come through as you're embroidering. And we're going to start with a back stitch. So for the back stitch, you have to make your first stitch. You start at the back of the stitch and then you go forwards to the uh, beginning of the stitch. And then when you do your next one, you come up behind where you want the stitch to end, and then you go back to meet the beginning of the other one. So we're always going to be doing that, coming up where we want the stitch to end, and then going back down into where we started the other stitch. And you want to be very precise and slow and deliberate about this because Every little stitch sort of makes the shape of the letter. This actually is footage of me recreating what I did on the patch because I didn't know I was gonna make a video for this. So this one came out a little sloppy. You don't wanna go fast or it'll end up like that. On my actual patch, I went a lot slower. I used my crafting light and everything to make it look neat. Okay, now you're going to use the washi tape to sort of make an outline of where you want your cursive to go. It's kind of hard to just freehand it, for me at least, so you can use this to give yourself a guide of where you want those letters. And I did the same thing when I did the best and blowing and gum with the washi tape. Uh, best and blowing are going to be done with two strands of embroidery floss instead of four, but I didn't show you that whole process because that would have taken forever. And this is what it looks like. When you're done, anytime you're running out of thread, you want to put your needle under the stitch in the back, loop your thread around, and pull tight to make a knot. I do this twice in order to really make sure that that's secure. And then you're just gonna snip that and make sure that it's tight. So that's what it'll look like as you're working on this. So this is the finished patch, and I've already cut it out. And the next thing we're going to do is put that patch onto this gold. And we're going to use our black embroidery floss with that same needle. We're going to be working on making this black border right here onto the yellow. So go ahead and put your felt in the hoop and make sure again that it's tight and put your patch right in the middle. What you're gonna do is back stitch around the perimeter of the patch. Same type of stitch we were already doing, but this is gonna secure it down and we're also gonna be making a guide for that thicker strip around that we were making. I believe it's called the satin stitch, that's this technique, but you like to make an outline first because otherwise it turns out super messy, trust me. I tried freehanding it without the outlines, it did not go well. So now we're gonna do a second line around the edge here. That's gonna be the other side of our guide, still doing just the back stitch. And do this all the way around, just like before.
Now that we have this done, you can see I actually went over it where it was a little bit too thin. We're gonna start doing, I think it's called the satin stitch, like I said earlier, not totally sure on that. Uh, but you're basically gonna go across, almost like little railroad tracks or something, and just fill this in all the way, making sure that you get really close to those guidelines that you made. And here you can see I'm just finishing this up. And there's a spot right here that I really wasn't happy with. It was too thin. You can just go back over that if you have any spots that are uneven, just to make sure that it looks nice and uniform all the way around. And at the end, same thing, go under the stitch and make a loop. And then at the end of this one, I put it under about an inch of that black and then trimmed it. And I also had a little piece that was sticking out. I trimmed that too. That's what it looks like. And now we're gonna do the white edging that's just for a little bit of detail. We're gonna use, well, it's actually the off-white embroidery floss. We're gonna just backstitch again all the way around right up at the edge of the black border. And we wanna do two rows of this. So we're gonna leave a space and then do a second row of backstitch. You can do more or less detail on this patch. You don't even have to do these rows if you don't want to. I just decided this was how I wanted to do it. And then again, we're gonna go under the stitches two times to make a knot and hide it under the thicker black part and trim. There we go. And trim off your little edges because we don't wanna keep those let your dog sniff them, I guess, because she's hanging out with you, whatever. <laughs> and then you cut out uh, a square so that it's easier to work with. Make sure you turn it over when you cut the patch out because if you don't, you could accidentally cut through your embroidery and completely ruin all this hard work you just did. So I'm just trimming it to make it a little bit neater here and a little more circular, but be very careful. And this is what the patch looks like. And that's the original. So now we're on to the crochet bag. We're using the yarn and we're gonna start off by putting a slip knot onto our hook. And then you're gonna wanna chain 18 that's just the width I decided I wanted mine to be that went well with the patch that I have. So as you can see, there's a little more than there is space on the patch. So now we're gonna single crochet 17. You're gonna start off in the second chain from the hook. That's the reason we wanted 18 earlier. You have to make sure you start off with an even number of chains so that you can get an odd number of single crochet stitches in this row. And there we are, done with that. This is what it looks like. And you're gonna chain one and turn your work. Now here, we're gonna be single crocheting into the first stitch and then we're gonna chain one. And after you chain one, you're gonna skip the next stitch and crochet, single crochet again, into the one after that. Then chain one again skip the next stitch again, go into the following one with a single crochet, and that's gonna be the pattern throughout. And again, do your chain, skip one, go into the following stitch, do that all the way across this row. All right, and that's what that looks like. And the last row that's different, I'm gonna show you right here. Now, once you turn, you'll see that there's a stitch and then a space. You're gonna single crochet into the space. Then again, chain one. There's a single crochet, there's the chain space. You single crochet into the chain space. Chain one, 
there's the stitch, skip over that, single crochet into this chain space, and chain one and you continue like that across for the entire project always remember at the end of the row that you're going to chain one when you turn uh, and then start off in that first stitch and also at the end of this row you're going to go into the actual stitch not there's no space there so you have to go to the stitch it's a little hard to see it here you kind of have to make sure that you get right into the right spot so you don't have lopsided stuff going on there but that's what you do chain one and that's what it looks like that's the linen slash moss stitch you're gonna do this for 44 rows and this is what it should look like and you don't want to cut your yarn you want to fold it in half and make sure that your patch fits on it and leaves a little extra so that we can tie it off at the top you're gonna grab your cream colored embroidery floss and your medium sized needle and your scissors and now we're going to start sewing this on and i'm just cutting kind of a long strand here i don't really have a specific length that i did it and then you're going to thread through your needle and start from the back come out and then go back from front to back and make sure you have both sides here so you can tie a square knot on the back and this is how we're going to secure it after that, come back through to the front with your thread and place your patch and go underneath the stitching on your patch and just continue to grab with your needle from the front side of the bag, just on the surface, you don't have to go through, and go into the stitch, stitching on the back of the patch. And you're gonna do this all the way around it's very important that you kind of double check as you go and make sure that the patch is still in the middle. Mine actually ended up a little bit off center because it was moving as I was trying to sew it. So make sure you pay attention to that as you go so you don't have that same problem. And you're gonna go all the way around and when you're done, you just bring it back through the back and sew, tie it off and sew in the ends. I didn't show that part, but that's what I did. So now, after we get all the animal fur off, we are going to flip it over and we're gonna put these sides together. So you're just gonna slip stitch through both sides of the work. Make sure your hook goes through the first side of the bag and then the second side. You grab the yarn with your hook and pull through the stitch and then the loop. Make sure that you don't do this too tightly, otherwise your bag will be very bunchy and it'll look oddly shaped and once you get to the end where the bottom's already already together because it's just folded you're going to tie it off and that'll be sewn in after for the other side you're gonna have to start with a slip knot on your hook and do the same thing but you just had to reattach yarn over here because we don't have yarn working over here and there's some tails right here they're kind of annoying and in the way I just after struggling with them a little bit, decided to ignore them and sew them in afterwards. So just get them out of the way. And continue along the same way as you did on the other side. Just go all the way across, make sure you're not going too tight. Again, trimming the yarn, tying it off. And now it's time to sew in these ends. What I did was go right through the edges where I had already done the slip stitching and then after I was satisfied with that I went through the back side underneath the stitches or the inside not really the back and then trim that and do that with all of them and then your bag is pretty much done all we have to do is make the little tie that makes the drawstring so we're going to do that by taking our black yarn and we're going to chain 47 it's kind of an arbitrary number, but that's just what worked for the size of my bag. You can do however many you feel you need to do. And that's what it looks like. You just wanna make sure that you have enough room to sort of make a drawstring pull. And then you're gonna cut the yarn, making sure to leave kind of a long tail because we're gonna use that to sew it in. And I kind of went every two stitches. I did over and under, just sort of weaved it through. And went all the way around like that. And 
then when I got to the other side, I made sure everything was nice and even. And then I trimmed off the little edges, just make sure they're nice and tight first. And then I tied a knot on it because that's how the original bag looked. And after that, it's done. Here is the finished bag. If you liked this, make sure you subscribe and you can watch any other videos that I have for Harry Potter crafts. I'm gonna be having a few more come out here soon. And I hope you like this. Hope you enjoyed this. Thanks so much for watching, and I will see you next time. Bye.